in my previous sermons, one of them I remember the topic of the lecture was uh, about love in Islam. How to be in love in, within yourself and you give that love to others and you connect that to the, the creator who created you and the rest of the mankind and everything. And the purpose of that topic was to create this stability and tranquility from love. That love, which starts at individual level, goes to family level, village level, community level, county level, country level, continent level, and to the entire to the worldwide. So expanding that love is our topic, inshallah, which is a continuation of the previous topic. And uh, inshallah, I want to address this topic in a way that I'm uh, making and uh, using Quranic verses, while I'm also interpret interpreting it with, in a scientific way. So, inshallah, I hope we will understand and we will try to implement that in our life. And so, inshallah, today the topic is that love, how do we create love? Which the ultimate goal is to create peace. And we know when we come to, from the Islamic points of view, love is divided into many categories, starting from the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you love Allah, you love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the rest of the Prophet is also. And then, after that, you love yourself, you love your parents, your children, your um, spouse, and your family, your relatives, your friends, your neighbors, and to the entire mankind. So to create that love, the center of that love is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. When he said, in kuntum Allah Allah is saying, if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, say to them, if you really love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي, then follow me. يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah, then Allah will love you. So the whole point is that <coughs> you follow the instructions and guidelines given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was and make, teaching us in a form of rehearsal. So we learn it in a practical way. And that, so then if you follow the ayahs of the Quran, who are, which are addressing the issue of love, plus the hadiths, then you will figure out how to create love and then create peace from out of that love. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, what we need today, what we are really lacking is that love which maybe some of us we see that we think that we cannot start it at individual level you start it from yourself and th until you reach to the all human beings and you reach to non-human beings to the plants the stones and sands and you love everything and that love it must be reflective to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You reflect to Allah's love and then Allah will love you. So everything is returning to Allah. So all, everything is going back to Allah. That love, I put my own definition, which I have ex referred to the Quran and the Sunnah and the science all together. And then I comprised it into this way, that I say love. First of all, we have to know we are not talking about the love of romance, 
that's a different topic and we are not here to talk about that, but the other love. So that love, and the way I put it here is that I put the letters of love is L-O-V-E. So then I said, maybe it should, it should be standing for life of vital energy. So you have the life, which is vital energy. You have strong energy, you have effective energy. You are then productive and contributing. So that is how love can help you as an individual to grow and become somebody who exists. And at the same time, you can influence as many as possible. That love, how you can make it. In order to put, to put it into practical, I, again, I went back to the letters, L-O-V-E, I put it into this way that we may say L stands for laughing, which starts from smiling, as you will see many of the hadiths are addressing this. So laughing, then openness, to be open to the people, to be open-minded. As we know, in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he says, Allah al mu'min al and uh, the Prophet says that hadith, Allah loves the believer who is strong, who interacts with the society and become a member of the society. That person, Allah loves him so much. So you become open to the mind, to mankind, to everybody. And then you do it voluntarily, be voluntary. You do, you do it in a volunteer way. And then, uh, be, e, e is then to have emotion to be someone who has emotion in his heart. And that emotion and love goes to everyone, whether that person is known to you or unknown to you. Then you love everybody. That is how you spread them the love. How can you make them all that? It is, psychologically, it's divided love into three parts, which are intimacy, passion and commitment. So this, I want to put this into verses of the Quran, inshallah. So intimacy is usually, this the first stage where you, uh, you, you share intimacy, you have intimacy love with someone that is, who is very close to you. Uh, that person is very close to you to the level that you share information with him or with her, whether that information is negative or positive, whether it's something which is against you or not, you share with that person because you put in, in trust on him or her. Then that is the level of intimacy. That intimacy in Arabic is called al wud and muwadda. So because there are many words that comes into Arabic and when it comes to love, which means hub. You can, if you see the words like uh, even al adfu al hanan al rift al rahma al mawadda al khalil, those they all tell you different levels and different stages of love. But then, let us look at this stage, which is intimacy. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is ordering us to give an intimacy love even to our enemy. Not to our family members, not to our friends, but even our enemies. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عسى الله أن يجعل بينكم وبين الذين عاديتم منهم مودة Allah, maybe Allah, and of course Allah, will put intimacy between you and those who have enmity with you, those who are, who are your enmity, enemy, they may become your best friend, your intimate friends, your intimate love. So do not use hatred against anybody because you never know that this person you hate today will become your closest brother tomorrow. And again, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Christians they love us in intimacy at the intimacy level. Which means we love them also. So we give them love 
initially we give love to everyone and then that love will come to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran, and you will find those who have the most intimacy for the believers are those who said we are Nasara Christian. And Allah is saying because they have those the big bishops and Rubans. The, their own chefs, and they are not arrogant, they are not proud all the time, they are humble. So then they give you immediate intimacy. So you should not create enmity, but give them intimacy, love, intimate love, then they will give it to you back. So everybody's like that. You first, you must become the one who is starting that love. And that love, I remember in my last khutbah, I described it as a love which is unrestricted and unconditional love to everyone. So then you have all that, and we must know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all the messages that Allah has sent, all the scriptures. The, and one of the essential elements was love. If you refer to all the and previous revelations to the Quran, they always talk about love. And then all that, it shows the how they state and the values of love. That intimacy should be given to everybody. Because and one of the messages, if we read the Quran, Allah is saying, Allah is saying, ajran illa al The Prophet is saying to the people, I'm not asking you for uh, wages and salary. That you give me salary because I'm telling you the good message. As, but all I want from you is to create intimacy among you in the little qurba. What that little qurba? You create intimate love with in your, in your relatives. So all that we see the values of love. And that is the initial step of getting peace and progress. We must know now the <coughs> values of that love, which is always, can start, you can start it, I can start it, he will start, she will start. Then it becomes to a higher level, to a community level. That's, the second stage is to have passion. Whatever you are doing, you must, be patient, you must feel patient for all that. If you have no patience, then you will not succeed. So you must be passionate through that, <coughs> and that passionate need is acceptance. That first of all, you accept somebody. You should not dislike somebody in the sight. When you saw somebody, you should not say, oh, this one, I'm, maybe it's not fit to me. She's not fit to me. I don't want to talk to her, to them. And when you see somebody, we should not acted like here nowadays we act, which is somebody is talking to you and that's the first time you ever met with that person, then you say, no, I don't even know you. How should I talk to you? Islam is against that. Whether you know that person or not, first you give salam, you have to give greetings to that person. When you greet the person and smile to them, you show them a smiling face and greet them, then you will start talking to them. Of course, you will not disclose your secrets, but you will have normal conversation with them. You never know that person will be your best friend in the future. So then you must have that acceptance and tolerance and then obedience and, and all that should lead you to sincerity, which leads you to forgive everybody. So forgiveness and feeling everybody is your close brother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَسْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Allah is saying, so you forgive them. You give burden to everybody. Don't you lie, don't you love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to 
give you forgiveness. If you love Allah to, Allah to forgive your sins, your crimes, your all your bad deeds, then forgive others. So those who forgive among themselves, Allah forgives them. So Allah forgive those who forgive themselves. That is uh, must be the motto that you are using. And from there, you must be uh, merciful to everybody. Allah is saying, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاتِمِنَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So those who feed others in a hidden way, in implicit way and explicit way, and then at the same time they hide their anger. When somebody makes them mad, they, they just hide it and they forget it and they forego. And then they will afin on us and they forgive others. Those Allah Allah you have Muslim. That is the that's what you when you are doing Ihsan. So Allah loves those who are Muslim, those who do good deeds. In order to come to them to that is the second category. The third category we said is commitment. That commitment is the stage of implication uh, application. So you implement what you have done if, uh, before and you have already put into your deep heart so intentionally you are good now it comes to a practical way what you need now to have and uh, the commitment need is number one it needs consider consideration you must consider others their problems you must feel sympathy to others and when you consider them you, you must you have, must have consciousness Pay full attention to the person's needs and problems, and then you will have confidence because you know what others are, what is bothering everybody, and you will know your level. And you will have confidence, and from there you will have good, good energy that can produce something uh, which is showing reasoning and pleasant, then peace and progress, and from there then you become you will help each other. And when we all help each other, that is we will stay we will go to the stage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wa ta'awanu ala al birri wa taqwa wa la ta'awanu ala al ithmi wa al So you help each other in the good deeds, in the righteousness, and do not help each other in doing violence and trouble and sins and crimes. So all when you combine all of them, that is how you connect yourself to Allah with others. So you create love among the creatures, and you can you connect that to the, to the Creator. That is how everything is going to Allah back, and Allah is always repeating in many verses in the Quran. Allah is saying, "Wa ilayhi Lord and from there we will ha must have the mercy to everybody among us among others then we must feel that compassion compassion and mercy to others and especially in our case those who are those who were born here should respect those who came after here <coughs> and have love for them and help them and the old immigrants should help the new immigrants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, says in the Quran, a very clear ayah that is talking about the all the denizens uh, of the city, the all the, uh, say the old citizens, and the immigrants, Allah is talking about them and saying, it is not that Quran, we should not always use it for the reason of revelation, but it, it generalizes to everywhere, because Quran is functional, in all the errors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and when he praised those who are good with the love, Allah is saying, Yuhibuna man hajara ilayhim wa la yajiduna fi sudurim harajan min ma utu wa yu'thiruna ala anfusim wa lo kana bihim khasasa wa min yuqa shuha nafsi wa ulaika mutalimun. So Allah is saying, they love those who migrated to them. So they, they love and they welcome the new immigrants. 
and they, that love comes from their deep heart. And then they will not, they share with whatever they have, they share with them. They give half of what they have. So that half of what they have, they are given to the newcomers, the immigrants who came to them because they are their guests. And they don't feel that they are higher than them. And they don't feel that their property is lost. Because whenever they give out something, they are giving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is saying, Allah is saying, So what they say, they feed, they give feeding to others. And out of the, the, out of the property they have, which they love so much. And they say to them, we are only feeding you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't expect you to give us um, to say thank you and to give us all kind to give us this back. Uh, so we just giving it in this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم استغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله على رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear respectful brothers and sisters This topic of love is too broad but I just want to highlight the opposite of the law. What is the opposite of law? It's hatred. Hatred then, I also put my own definition the hatred. That hatred, how I define it, is the way, the same way that I define it, the law. L-O-V-E. Then let, let me divide the hatred. It's H-A-T-R-E-D. So it may be standing for hardship, a agony, t threat, and then r rivalness, e enmity, and d death. What is that? Hatred first starts from somebody that you become, you you start hardship by becoming difficult person to be approached. And you see others to approach somebody is difficult. So you don't want to talk to somebody because you feel it is very hard. So you created the hardship. And you don't want somebody to talk to you, you will suspect it. If somebody talks to you, you will be so suspicious what this person wants. So you made yourself, you put yourself into the level of hardship. So hardship starts from there. What is next is agony. When you become hard, you create agony. And when you create that agony, you create threat. Because agony, always the, the following thing is to be threat. And then the threat results fighting. The rivalness comes from there. So you and the other person become rival to each other. And then there's enmity, which spreads to many people. And from there, death comes. So that death could lead you to hellfire. Therefore, we see hatred is that one. And love is the one we have uh, I've explained before, which I say is a life of vital energy. Then on that, what do we need? We need to fight against our ego which may take us to the lowest of all the creatures. Why we, why we can use it to the highest? So if ego controls us, we fall into the hatred. But if we control the ego, then we fall into the level of love. And we will spread that love from one person to all mankind. And how should we do that quickly? Let me pick up some of the hadiths I have here, like 10 hadiths, but let me take as, as I can. 
First of all, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمن ولا تؤمن حتى تحاب ألا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتم تحاب إفش السلام بينكم. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying, you will not enter paradise until you have faith and become believers. And you will not have faith, faith until you love each other. Shall I direct you to something that if you fulfill, you will love one another? That is, spread peace and greetings among yourselves. Spread greetings, which is peace, because the word salam it itself is peace. So you spread the greetings means you are spreading the peace. Another hadith. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Do not belittle any good deed, even to meet your brother with a smiling face." In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Your smile is in the face of your brother or sister is an act of charity." <laughs> another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Love for your brother what you love for yourself." And in another hadith, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do unto others as you yourself would like to be done unto you. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, La yu'min ahadukum hatta yuhibbu li nafsi, hatta yuhibbu li akhi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. None of you is a believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. In all of that, then when you do that, that is the basic love, which is based on mercy. And the, another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "In Allah rafiqun, yuhibbu rifta, wa yuhdi ala rifta ma la yuhdi ala alunf, wa ma la yuhdi ala ma siwa." Indeed, Allah is is a compassionate and love of love of, and He loves the compassion. compassion. And he and sympathy, and he gives on com compassion what he does not give uh, on the violence. So what you were looking with the violence, now you can get it with compassion and mercy. And what he does not give it to any other way. My dear brothers and sisters, the topic is too large, but I just conclude that we only look at the verses of the Quran that says. For example, Allah is saying, "Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muttaqin," so you must be muttaqin. "Inna Allah yuhibbu al-tawabin," or "Yuhibbu al-mutadhirin." "Inna Allah," so Allah loves those who are repentant to Him, those who purify themselves, and then Allah yuhibbu al-muhsinin. Allah loves those who are righteous, doing good deeds, and Allah yuhibbu al-muhsinin. Allah loves those who are just. On the opposite, that you stay away from in order to get the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is that Allah is saying, "La yuhibbu Allahu jahra fi su'i min al qawli." Allah doesn't love bad, saying bad things. La yuhibbu Allah la yuhibbu kull kafar in athim. Inna Allah la yuhibbu zalimin. Inna Allah la yuhibbu mutadin. Inna Allah all la yuhibbu mufsidin. Inna Allah la yuhibbu khaynin. Inna Allah la yuhibbu fasad. In conclusion, it's that Allah is saying, Allah doesn't love those who are uh, hide the truth, those who are criminal, those who are oppressors, transgressors, corrupted people, deceivers, and those who encourage the corruption. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to create, initiate, and establish this issue of love among us so that we create peace and to all mankind. And we should be the ones who are teaching this to all mankind. We should not be the ones who destroy the peace. My dear brothers, and brother, I will say to Allah Azza wa Jalla.